Hey guys, it's Angelica. Um, this is gonna be my Q&A video that I've been trying to do for a while, but I'm too lazy. So yeah, I wrote all the questions down on a piece of paper for me to read, because I won't remember them. Um, there's a few, like, questions that no one specifically asked me, but I wanted to do them because I get the questions a lot. They're just not from a specific person. So, um, and then all about my blog. So, uh, first off, some people don't realize this, so I'm just going to say it. So, if you already know this, then I'm sorry. It's, like, obvious to you. But, yeah, my blog is, like, a collection of things people are selling that they either own, found, or bought them, or made themselves. So, yeah, unless I say in the post, that it's mine, then it's not mine. It's someone else's. Most of the posts for things for sale, like with the price and the link and everything, are not mine. They're people selling those items. Because that's what my blog's for. It's like a collection of all that stuff. So people can like find it in one specific area and don't have to like search all the far ends of the internet to find it. So yeah. And um, if you have any items that you want to sell me, or not sell me, that you want to put on my blog that you have for sale, you can submit them to my blog and I will post them. Um, yeah, you just go to like, what would it be like, shopoddities.tumblr.com slash submit and then you can put it in there because I couldn't figure out how to get like the submit button thingy so that people could just click it. Yeah, because I'm not very Tumblr blog savvy. But yeah, um, yeah, post a photo of the item in the submit thing so people, like, know what it is, and then, um, a description, how much it is, and then a link to where people can buy it if they're interested. And also, if you're looking for something specifically, like some kind of taxidermy or some kind of animal skull or, like, anything of that, you can always ask me, and I will, I mean... It might take me a little while, but a lot of the times I just like answer immediately. If you like are looking for something, you can just ask me. You can put it in my ask box and I'll go see if I know where to find it. Um, some things are not, you're not going to find. Like really rare taxidermy, like someone was asking me about a dodo bird, which I think there's only one dodo bird taxidermy that exists. If that, and then like two-headed kittens, a lot of like deformed animals like that you're not really gonna find on the internet they're more like a closed deal kind of thing with like actual dealers that you go out and talk to in real life and then like human body parts minus like bones are kind of difficult to get so yeah you're probably not gonna really find those on the internet unless you just happen upon them when they're posted so yeah sorry okay so now I'm gonna move on to like questions people actually ask me with their names and everything. So, Cat Lady Catharis, I think I said that right, asked, can you remember your first experience with oddities that led to your interest and what would be your dream job slash life? Um, trying to think. Uh, I mean, I guess I've always liked weird stuff. I was really into like, insects and stuff when I was a kid so I kind of like collected dead insects when I was a little kid and I guess that's kind of where it started and then I just I moved when I got into middle school I moved into like wet specimens because I got like a fetal pig and a mouse and a bird and a frog I think I got them all in jars for a science thing and I just like I really liked the fetal pig and then I always liked taxidermy like I would go to Bass Pro Shop with my dad and they'd have all the taxidermy in the um, Bass Pro Shop and I always thought it was cool and I always wanted to like pet them and stuff and I felt kind of creepy because I was just like oh I love you I'm playing with you but it's like a skin covering of a dead animal so yeah I guess that's kind of like my first experience with oddities would be like dead bugs maybe yeah and then what would be your dream job like this question is kind of like hard to answer. It's kind of like when you're a kid and people are always like, what do you want to do when you grow up? You're like, I don't know, it changes monthly. I mean, I don't know for sure what my dream job would be, 
obviously something I enjoy doing. I mean, I'm a culinary student right now, so I would like to own a restaurant, which would be cool. And I do want to get into taxidermy more, so that'd be cool to do for a living. There's like a lot of things I like, so pretty much any job with something that's my interest would be a dream job. Because I do have realistic expectations that I'll like everything I want to do is going to go perfectly and I'm going to make like a good living off of that and be like rich or whatever. So yeah, in dream life, that's just like, I don't know, not die soon. I don't really know. It's a hard question. It's really broad. So yeah, sorry. Um, Obscure Octopus asked, how did you convince your parents to let you buy dead animals? I like the way they put that. What do your parents think of your collecting? Okay, so... When I collected dead bugs, my parents thought it was weird, but I mean, I guess they didn't really care. I mean, I remember them thinking like, oh, that's kind of gross, but they didn't like really do anything about it. They were like, okay, some dead bugs. They weren't like smelly, they were like preserved and dried from the sun and stuff, so I didn't like keep smelly bugs in my room, except I kept smelly ladybugs in my room, but they were alive. I tried to keep them as pets in cardboard boxes, and I built them little like houses and like fed them. It was weird. But yeah, ladybugs don't smell good when there's a bunch of them in a confined area. They kind of smell like old watermelon, if you know what that smells like. But yeah, um, I didn't really have to convince them. Like, my parents never really were like, no to me about oddities. Obviously, other things they said no to me for. But, like, my mom, she kind of, like, thinks it's... My dad doesn't live with me anymore, so it doesn't really matter what he thinks about it. But my mom, she doesn't really care. I never really got big into collecting, like, having a big collection until, like, around this time last year maybe a little bit before that, but a little bit over a year. So like, she never really had like, I didn't have dead animals in my room like for years, minus like bugs. And uh, when I was in middle school, I had the like little animals, like I told you about, like the fetal pig and stuff like that. But um, I went through like a weird PETA phase through like the seventh grade up until like, I almost, until I graduated high school. So I was kind of like iffy about it, so I ended up taking all of my little specimens I had gotten in middle school and I dumped them in a big hole in the backyard and buried them to give them like a proper burial kind of thing. So yeah, I mean at the time it made me happy I guess, but like now I'm like, ugh, oh, damn it. I mean there weren't anything that cool except a fetal pig, because sometimes fetal pigs are hard to find, even though they're so common they're actually hard to like get your hands on and put it on your desk, yeah, if that makes sense. So yeah, my parents, they're okay with it. My dad doesn't really have to deal with it. My mom thinks it's weird, and I mean, she doesn't really like particularly like the stuff herself, but she doesn't like not let me do it. I mean, all the things that I've, I've bought in myself with my own money or made myself. Like, I don't have my mom buy me that stuff. Because I doubt she would, honestly. I don't think she would buy me that stuff. But, um, yeah, so I'm not really sure, like, if you guys are looking to how to convince your parents to do this stuff, unless your parents are just kind of, like, more open-minded about it, or, like, you're using your own money to buy it, I'm not really sure how to convince them. Um, if you, like, sit down and talk to them about, like, why you're, like, why it's a hobby, or, like, if you're passionate about it, why you're passionate about it, then maybe that'll work, because I mean, that does work a lot of the times with parents. I mean, my parents are pretty, like, open about everything, so it was never been a problem for me. Uh, Princess Pale Moon asked, when and why did I start collecting, do I preserve and clean anything myself? So yeah, so I guess technically I started collecting insects when I was a kid, but I didn't start actually, like, growing a, like, variety collection until about a yearish ago, a little bit over a year ago, like I said before. And um why? I like it. Just like my rocks. I'm obsessed with rocks, so there's rocks. I could just grab a rock right now from like different areas. They're just everywhere. So same thing happened with dead animals. You just grab them from places. See I can just grab this off my desk. Or I can grab this off my desk. It's just, it's everywhere. It's just something I like. 
it's hard to explain exactly why. I'm just really into like natural history, like plants, rocks, animals, all the all that kit and caboodle. I'm just really into all of it, so and I'm into Jesus. You see Jesus right there. But yeah. But I'm not into Jesus like Christian or anything. Just so you guys know. That's not important. Anyway. Okay. Do I oh do I preserve and clean anything myself? Um all my wet specimens I've done myself. So yeah. Every wet specimen I have. Um I've done a few insects myself. Um I really want to get a taxidermy. I've done one. I've done a few bone cleanings and I've done one bone articulation for my friend's kitten that passed away. But I got paid to do it. Like it was a commission piece I did for her, so I don't like have it here. It was really cute though. It was super hard because kitten's bones are like teeny tiny and they're like really soft. So yeah. And then um Blink one motherfucking eighty two asked oh how do you prepare a wet specimen mount rat mount like a rat or a small rodent details please um yeah I did a rat I'll get him for you but he's all the way over there so yeah I'll just tell you um you have to get a jar that preferably is sealed it doesesn't have to be but you do get a little bit more problems when it's not like um you could get more of a smell I guess and you could get like uh more perspiring or not pers is it perspiring evaporation you get more evaporation from the uh the alcohol when you put it in there if you don't have a seal on it so a seal is preferable but if you don't it's like whatever so I'll just say for like a rat so you take your rat I had a frozen feeder rat that I bought. So I took the rat, thawed him out, I bathed him because it is important to wash them in case they have debris on them because if you put them in there and there's debris on them, it like floats around in the jar and it's kind of gross. So yeah, so you want that. You want to clean it. Um, wear gloves if it's going to freak you out. I just wash my hands immediately after I'm done so it doesn't really like bother me all that much. But yeah. Make sure everything's like sanitized. You don't want like dead rat on your like kitchen forks and on your like vegetables, on your carrots and stuff like that. So, you know, make sure you like wash your hands, wash the sink that you're cleaning it in, any tools you use. And uh, yeah, after that, you can either, um, if you want, you don't have to. If you have like access to syringes, you can inject the preserving fluid into it and that does help preserve the insides a lot better. If you don't, you can kind of like pour it down the animal's mouth. Sometimes if they're really small, like mice and stuff, you don't even really have to. They'll just float in it and they'll be fine. So yeah, you just put the dead rat in the jar and you fill it with the fluid and then you close it. Ta-da! And uh, you can use formaldehyde to preserve it if you want. You don't really need it, especially for something so small. You can use... um. I'm going to try to say this correctly. I can spell it, but it's hard for me to say it. It's like isopheric alcohol, which is rubbing alcohol. So you can buy it at Walmart, Target, a pharmacy, anywhere. And, um, yeah, you want it to be at least 80% isopheric alcohol because they do have a percentage of how much is in it in all rubbing alcohols because some don't have as much. So you want like an 80 or higher. They do make a 91%. I don't know why it's 91, but um, that's the one I use. And, uh, yeah, you can use that, and it works fine. The only thing is, it hasn't happened to my rat yet, I think, because he was probably cleaned or something before he was frozen. I don't know. But, um, like, for my kittens and my squirrel, their liquid does get a little change of color over time. It kind of depends on which what it is and, like, how it dies and stuff to where, like, the color might change. Um... It's got like a little bit of a yellowish tint to it, but you can't really notice it and it doesn't bother me. So if it doesn't bother you, then whatever. And if it does, you can always just change it because rubbing alcohol is really inexpensive for this kind of thing. So yeah, you can always um, just change it. And then, okay. Frost, Frostling in the forest said, how long have you been collecting things? What made you start? I guess I kind of already answered this, but yeah. 
so I really didn't start until the last year ish but yeah that's the same question I don't know why I wrote it down oh and then gentleman corpse asks where are you from where are you living um I'm not really from anywhere my parents are both in the military when I from when I was before I was born up until about middle school so I did like travel a lot even for like middle school and stuff um I didn't really settle down until like for like high school and things like that so yeah I'm not really like from anywhere specifically I currently live in North Carolina in a town right outside of Charlotte I'm just gonna say Charlotte because like whenever I tell people like when I visit other states and say where I'm from they have no idea where that is so yeah it's just like right north of Charlotte North Carolina so I live here I've lived here for a few years now so no problems here it's okay it's not my favorite place I've been because uh, my parents were in the military so we did travel out of the country we've been to like tons of states in the US and yeah so living in North Carolina is kinda like meh compared to like the places out of country that we've lived but it's not that bad I really like the mountains in North Carolina that's probably like the number one thing the like Cherokee, Maggie Valley. You guys probably don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I live in North Carolina. So that's all the questions I had for this Q&A video. It did get kind of long. I guess I was expecting that because I talk so much. But yeah, I will have other Q&A videos, obviously, because there's just so many things that I can make videos about in this kind of like area. So I will do other Q&A videos. So like if you guys have any questions you want to ask, go right ahead and I'll make another Q&A video so uh thank you guys I hope this was informative I'm sorry it's kind of boring but yeah if you have any questions let me know so thanks bye